Hi, this is Frank Todaro, and you're listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. There is nothing wrong with your podcast player. Do not attempt to adjust the volume. Hello and welcome back into our studio. You are now listening to Studio 2009 here on the GeekCast Radio Network. I'm, of course, Steve Jordan Mike, and joining me, as always, is Steve Megatron. Yo! We welcome, for a second of three appearances, a very special guest in the gaming hipster himself, TV's Mr. Neil. He's a back. He's a back. I'm on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Today we will bring you a top lists episode in our video games we love series here inside Studio 2009. These are our top five most replayable video games. Before we get into this, I did not count any mobile games because I always play mobile games and technically match three games really aren't real video games. They are, but they aren't. So I didn't count any of the mobile games that I play on my Android phone. I only counted PC and console stuff that I've played. And we are going from number five to number one. So we'll let the guest go first. Neil, what is your number five? I'm going to go with the game that had been in my Super Nintendo for literally months on end without ever swapping the cartridge out. And that would be Super Mario All-Stars with Super Mario World in the game as well. Because I would just, I don't know, I, I had this Mario kick like back in the early 90s where I, it was like all I would play is just Super Mario. Usually Super Mario 2. That was like, this was the cartridge that made me realize I must really love Super Mario 2 because it's always the one that I play. <laughs> but really any of them. You know, Mario 3, Mario World, they're just such fun platformers to play. So I would just, like, jump into them all the time and just, you know, just, like, in an evening, just bang out one of the games and, you know, and be done with it. And it, it, it's just always, it's it's like this, it's like a snack food type game. It's just, like, you, you just jump right in. Even though, even though it's the same thing over and over again, you just, you just love it. Absolutely. Steve, what do you got at number five? I have Star Wars Pod Racer. Really? Uh, yeah, I back when when I used to. Um, uh, go to my dad's for the weekend because he had the game and somebody somebody at work bootlegged the disc for him and like it was great because anytime they bootleg discs you could just play them uh i didn't need a cd key or if i did they wrote them down and then you didn't have to register them but um <laughs> i i had a gamepad and i played the crap out of this game uh on the computer and i got so good at it uh, granted, I was hyped up on like uh, a two liter of caffeine, watching <laughs> like at twelve o'clock at night, watching Saturday Night Live and playing Pod Racer, um, <laughs> and I I was just like destroying this game to the point that like when uh, EA All Access uh, Origin had uh, Pod Racer on there, uh, because you can't play the original game on on a modern computer, it will not run. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because the way it's designed, it had to be updated enough to run on a modern machine, uh, which is the only reason that you have to get it through like Origin because you can't get it any other way. Um, but I played it again like a year ago, and I w- it was still just as fun as I remembered. Very cool, very cool. Coming in at number five for me is... Uh... <laughs> Life is complicated. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. Perhaps here, things will be different. Are you in, big guy? Or are we going to have to kill you? Well, 
since you put it that way. I mean... Grand Theft Auto 4, out now. Rated M for Mature. What are you talking about? Grand Theft Auto 4. This game, I never ever got to finish it. I had to watch playthroughs to see how it ended because I could never get to the end. But once I got to a point where I was so... You know, I was I had all the money, I had all the weapons, I had all this and whatever. I would just go around destroying stuff because I love when open world gaming allows you to do that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just I thought it was so fun and so interesting. And some of the vehicle, I mean, the Grand Theft Auto franchise has, has certainly come a long way. I wish they'd stop doing stuff for five or online and actually release a sixth game. But it is what it is. Um I just love playing that that one. I loved using the uh, the the SUVs, the Hummers in in that game because it was like eh, this is the only way I'm ever gonna drive. So just get out of my way. You see how I drive in Grand Theft Auto Four? You know why I don't drive in real life, folks? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Not kidding. <laughs> How'd you get the car into a tree? Eh? <laughs> You just go up the ramp and, you know, how'd you get the car in a building? Oh, I dropped out of a helicopter and then I used the cheat code. Anyway, number four for you, Mr. Neil. Saturn Bomberman. This was a game in the mid to late 90s where all my buddies would come over at like 10 o'clock at night and we would just stay up until like 4 o'clock in the morning just bombing the shit out of each other because it's this party game. You get a bunch of, uh, well, you get the you get the six player adapter for the Sega Saturn and that's enough for everybody. I, you know, unless you just, unless you have like a, unless you have like a real, real lot of friends and you can get like an extra one. But like, you could just sit there and just like, and just have hours of fun, just screwing each other o- over again and again and again. You know, you know, you get the you get the power glove lets you throw the bomb, and if you if you like if you get it permanently on your character, then you can just like really easily throw the bomb over the wall and it hits the other guy before he has a chance to like even start. <laughs> so you you knock someone out real early and they get mad. I mean, <laughs> fights would break out, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'd start like kicking each other and like swearing and just calling each other names that the sort of names that would end friendships except we'd just forget <laughs> about it the next day oh my god that game was great and i still have it and i introduced it to my sister's kids and they love it too awesome but i i love i love saturn bomber man it's the best one but really all of them are great yeah i i, I miss the days where you could you know actually say things to your friends and they don't run home and cry (laughs) go on twitter (laughs) can you believe what this podcaster said to me in this podcast shut up so mean (laughs) (laughs) steve what do you got at number four this is kind of a cop-out because i played them both at the same time but i'm going to say it anyway uh (laughs) i used to play uh mega man x8 Mm-hmm. A crap load. Um, and Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. That's a mouthful. But um, I used to play the crap out of both of those like simultaneously on different systems. But Or actually, I think they were on the same system. They were on the GameCube uh, or the, no, the PlayStation 2. That's what I played them on. I get confused because part of both of those series were on the GameCube. Uh, but no, I played them on the PS2. Uh, but I, I used to play the crap out of those um, because one... Uh, I got my nice side scroller because I was I was always a fan of the Mega Man X games. Mm-hmm. Uh, just growing up, I I'd always enjoyed those more than Mega Man, only because one, the sprites looked so much better, <laughs> and you could climb on the freaking wall. <laughs> uh, that's what I love about Mega Man X, the very first one. I I love that game, the climbing on the like. 
this energy canister is halfway up the wall. How am I supposed to get there? And well, then you yeah, just right. go, bark, bark, yeah. bark, 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 bark. And it, it took some like precision to stay on the wall. Yes, it did. It like like you know how people always say, "Oh, that game's a button masher." No, no, no. Mega Man X, the original Mega Man X, it's a button masher, but it's a button masher in a different way. Where you like like you just said, you have to basically trick the buttons into thinking, "Oh, you're going down." No, we're going up. Bang, 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 bang. bang. Yeah, and it was pretty much the same thing with the Dragon Ball Z game. Uh, I'd played the Budokai. Um, and the one, two, and three, and then the Budokai Tenkaichi one, two, and three. Uh, but the third one was my favorite because you get to play um, with various fusion characters and the, the the Dragon Ball Z stuff. So I mean, it, it was just it was more so I just got to play a fighter, mm-hmm. like just generic fighter, and that was always what I went towards. But I haven't played either of those in ages. <laughs> yeah. For me, just like Steve said, he kind of cheated. I'm kind of cheating on my number four and my number three, but it's okay because they're part of the same franchise. Uh, Number four for me is Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 2. And I can pretty much do this all day. What's the matter? Is that the best VR kids can do? Blah, blah, blah. I'll be in touch. I had heard of Metal Gear when I was a kid, but I never paid any attention to the old metal, the original Metal Gear stuff. When PlayStation launched in 95 and then by 98, when Kojima came out with Metal Gear Solid, I was like, what is this and how can I like I literally remember standing in a video store playing the demo of this game. And the demo was just that very first mission of um shadow moses it's when you know when he first lands and he has to you know get into the base kind of thing and i just love that game and metal gear solid 2 is just it takes the first game and ramps it up even though you end up playing as a different character halfway through but that's okay it's not that big of a deal but i love the metal gear franchise i I wish i could play some of the other ones But, uh, yeah, MGS 1 and 2 for me at number 4. Neil, what is your number 3, sir? Well, it's a game... Oh, it's it's actually a series of games that's been on every console generation since the PlayStation 2. And that would be uh, Pinball Hall of Fame. Particularly the Williams collection, but really any of them will do. Uh, it's it's exactly what it is. It's pinball. It's a lot of classic tables. You can go in there and play uh, a black hole or space shuttle or taxi or fun house. You can kick pinbot's ass, mm-hmm. and it's just I. If you're a pinball fan, you understand. If not, then it's like, why would you play pinball as a video game? Trust me, it's it's fucking awesome. I just. It's so cathartic to just sit there for like four hours trying to get the high score, trying to get all the tricks, you know, get the get the ramp, pick up, you know, pick up Dracula and and Marilyn Monroe and Taxi and you know do all this crazy stuff and in Fun House, you know, try to hit try to hit the the big face with the ball, you know, make him choke on it. Really, just a ton of fun. I love the Pinball Hall of Fame and. Uh, I try to keep my PlayStation 2 working, and I'm I'm losing that battle. So oh, I no. think at some point I'm gonna have to like, you know, find some alternative because unfortunately the new versions of Pinball Hall of Fame no longer have the Williams table, so I can't play I can't play my Funhouse anymore. Oh no, that sucks. But, yeah, but I I love Pinball Hall of Fame. It's so good. Yeah, and that's on the PS2, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, it's on um, PS2, PS3, yeah. and I think PS4 okay. as well. Yeah, see, I I've never even as a little kid, I was never a pinball guy, and just just pinball machines in general. Because hello, uh, I have cerebral palsy. I can only use one hand. This also goes into my whole thing of anything past the PlayStation 2 controller, I refuse to play because the controller is, I play it one-handed and it's too damn big. Like that first Xbox controller, oh my God, it was like going from 
Illinois to Colorado big at my <laughs> at, at the time for me. All right, Steve, what do you got at number three, sir? Okay, so my number three is Batman Arkham City. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a lie. There's nothing wrong with you. Nice of you to say, but you of all people should know there's plenty wrong with me. Which is the first game I bought for the uh, the Xbox 360 and uh, was the only game I had for the first six months because they were so blasted expensive. Granted, I got the Xbox 360 and Arkham City on Black Friday deal, so they weren't very expensive, but um, between getting both of them... <laughs> I couldn't afford another game at that time. So that's what I played for six months straight. And I got bloody good at it um, on m- multiple levels. Uh, so I, I just love the fact that it was um, kind of an an open world Batman game. And the the detail, the story, the, the voice acting, uh, you just had all of it in there. Um, plus a lot of nice gear, a lot of uh, new features that weren't in the original Arkham Asylum game, which uh, I, I just I think Arkham City was like my favorite out of the entire four games that they came out with. Was it four? I thought it was only three. No, they had Arkham, they had Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight, and then they had Arkham Origins, Origins. Okay, which took that's, place before yeah. all three of them. But it was a completely different studio and voice right. acting team. Yeah, like they didn't reuse anybody. Like it was just brand new. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, you don't. Yeah. No, anyway, yeah. If you guys want to hear the uh, Arkham City GCRN get us famous story, listen to uh, episode 389 of Altered Geek, the eight year anniversary show of Altered Geek. I'll link that in the show notes to this episode of Studio 2009. But I retold the story of how I thought uh, Maurice LaMarche was going to fly from LA to Kentucky and kill me. Well, for, it'd be more for, so a studio would put the hit on you. <laughs> well, true. I mean, I do know several people that um, have done interviews with Disney stars, and Disney has basically given them a cease and desist, or else. Well, we don't we don't talk about Disney on the podcast, especially when they're you know when when everybody's ready to sue them. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. All right, my number three, as Neil mentioned earlier, I'm specifically talking about. The SMB3 and specifically for All Stars. So I love the original Super Mario Brothers three, but once All Stars came out, I'm like, oh my god, my my legally blind ass can actually see this game and actually enjoy. Holy <laughs> crap! What did they do to Super Mario Brothers three? They improved it so much. And going between the two, oh my god, I can't. After after playing All Stars Mario three, forget regular mario 3 as far as the graphical look and things like that that and super mario world oh man these games i could play for hours the only the only two things i did not like about mario 3 were pipeland and that stupid hand in darkland i hated that thing <laughs> But man, I love what I love about Mario Three is just the, the the items and the collecting, and you can use powers whenever you want to use powers, and oh well, for the most part. But it was so so cool. And Super Mario World, I remember Christmas of 1992. I finally made a right choice, and I've told this story before. I think I told it last time. Last episode, actually, maybe or the first video game episode we did here at Studio 2009. <sighs> Back in the 80s, I chose poorly between Nintendo Entertainment System and Sega Master System. Luckily, in 1992, I got smarter as a 12 year old, and I'm like, Ma, I want Super Nintendo, and I, because again, Back then in 92, you actually had the Nintendo centers in the mall where you could go up and you could play demo versions. And we the only level that was ever on my demo versions in the malls at the Nintendo centers was Donut Plains 1. <laughs> I got so, <laughs> so good at Donut Plains 1 from going to the mall so many times before the game came out. And I remember Christmas Eve... Christmas Eve through Christmas Day into December into Boxing Day because hey, why not mention Canada? Uh, 
I played that game for a solid three days. Every chance my 12-year-old self could play it. Oh, man. I remember playing it at, like, midnight, December 26, 1 a.m., and, of course, the one levels I got to at that time of the night was, um, (laughs) oh, it's Vanilla Dome. I think it's Vanilla Dome 3 and 4. It's past the ghost house. It's the lava levels. You know what I'm talking about, Neil. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God, I am getting so frustrated, but I have to be so quiet because my mother is asleep. And if she finds out I'm playing video games in the middle of the night, I'm going to get in trouble. (laughs) All right, Neil, what is your number two, sir? be a game boy one and it's donkey kong 94 this was a game that came out and it it kind of tried to trick you it starts out as like a port of the original donkey kong but then you beat the fourth you beat the fourth stage and all of a sudden it turns into this awesome puzzle platformer where you have to like run and jump through these stages and find a key and the key takes you to the exit and it's it's trying to figure out the route through the stage that that is the puzzle because sometimes you know, there'll be like a bed of spikes and you can't walk on the spikes. So you have to like figure out how to how to get one of the enemies to fall down onto the spikes so you can stand on top of them and they'll walk you across. And there's all sorts of like little like little hazards and, you know, things that you can use to jump over to launch yourself over pits and and, you know, clear fire like beds of flame that are in your way. And, uh, you know, it's it's. It is the most fun Game Boy game I think there is. And it's kind of the gameplay is kind of like a cross between Mario 2 and Mario 64 in a way that I cannot even explain on this podcast. <laughs> because you can throw objects like in Mario 2, but he also does kind of the kind of the triple jump that he does in in Mario 64. It, it's a really weird interpretation of Mario, but it's so goddamn fun and I love it. <laughs> Donkey Kong 94 is like one of those hidden classics on the Game Boy that like a lot of people didn't discover until like much much later. So what you're saying is Rare actually did something good with Donkey it Kong. It was not Rare, it was a Miyamoto game cuz <laughs> oh, Rare, okay. Rare would never have made a game this good. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> Steve, what is your number 2, sir? My number 2 is Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. And I choose that one specifically because uh, that's the one I still play (laughs) Uh, (laughs) to this day. Uh, When did it come out? It came out in the year 2000. Um, (laughs) Then I'll tell you something. I've been playing the Command and Conquer games since the late 90s. And I, I always liked the Red Alert versions of the game more than the other ones because they got into some weird... Um, sci-fi type stuff and Red Alert 2 kind of kept a little more grounded other than the fact that it had some uh, newer tech but they did some time travel stuff and I I just I don't know I always preferred the premise and the storyline of them Uh, but I I still enjoy that because you get to army build you get to you know build a base it kind of calls back to those old days when everybody played uh, Warcraft and, and Starcraft and um, you know, the the real-time strategy stuff. And I, I just, I dug being able to sit there and figure it out. And um, my dad, b- before uh, we had a, a, a router in our house, or a network uh, mm-hmm. router, he figured out that you could um, play two-player on games if you strung a network cable from one machine to the other. And created like this weird n- internal network by just doing that. Um, and so we, awesome. we were able to play Command and Conquer and like uh, other games, just multiplayer by doing that. I think the only Command and Conquer game I've ever played was Renegade. Beginning of the end for them. <laughs> yeah, kind of was. <laughs> hey, excuse me. All right, number two for me, another classic. (laughs) 
The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. Oh, man, I love this game. I don't know what it is about this one, but it just felt more real at the time. Even though it's still the tiny sprites and and everything else, to me, this always felt like a much-needed improvement over the original as far as graphics go. I'm sure that's blasphemous to all the NES fans out there, but uh, <laughs> I just, I don't know what it is. I just love the story, the whole the whole trickery with Aang him and, and all that, and, and just some of the challenging parts of that game. And having to figure out which way to get the items, and, oh, you can't do this until you get this item. You can't do this until you get this. Once I had the hook shot, everybody watched the hell out because I'd destroy all those people with that damn hook shot. I love that game. It is now time for our number one choices for our most replayable video games. Neil, what do you got? I have one game that basically represents an entire franchise because really this entire franchise is just infinitely replayable. And I have to say the name the way the announcer in the name says says the name Street Fighter Alpha 3. And the reason why I picked Street Fighter Alpha 3 is because it is like the dream match of all classic Street Fighter games. You have all the Alpha characters in there and you have all the Street Fighter 2 characters in there. And there's like every... Every single character has multiple different play styles. You can play it. You can play a character as like as like the alpha type rules, where you have like you have these super combos, and you know you have alpha counters and all all the alpha rules. But then you can also play like it's Super Street Fighter Two, where you have like one big, uh, you have like one big super combo, and uh, you don't you don't necessarily have uh, you don't have I think it's the the air you don't have the air blocking in uh, in the in the X version or, or uh, mm. the, you know the Xism uh, play style and then there's like one that's called Vism which is uh, I guess it's very combo heavy and uh, you, you have you get like the like a shadow uh, of yourself that that can follow you and, and mimics all your punches it's kind of like the shadow uh, follower in in Ninja Gaiden two. And uh, you can get some crazy combos with that. I did a, uh, I did a uh, the the Chun Li leg kick. Mm-hmm. And I got like a forty four hit combo on on someone one time. It was really wild. And oh, later wow. version later versions of the game, uh, the the home console ports you can get um, you get like extra play styles. So you can actually get a play style that is like the original Street Fighter two and, and like all sorts of like goofy. All sorts of goofy things, and plus extra characters. You can play as Guile and and uh, DJ and T Hawk and all the characters. So it was like the ultimate uh, 2D version of Street Fighter, and it was like, I think it was pretty much the last one that ever came out before they finally just you know went to 3D. But it is it is my favorite Street Fighter, and it's one it's absolutely my favorite uh, replayable game of all time. Awesome. Yeah, I I miss Raul Julia so much. <laughs> oh, <no. sighs> All right, Steve, what do you got for your top pick? My top pick. My topic. Graduation ceremony will commence at twelve hundred hours. Attendee, please confirm you have clearance for departure. You are part of an enduring tradition. For over 200 years, men and women have served with honor, courage, and wisdom. Our first duty has always been to the truth, the guiding principle that defines us. From the stars, knowledge. To wear this uniform 
is to continue a most noble mission. Welcome aboard, Lieutenant. To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Lieutenant Yoshi, alert Starfleet. We have engaged the Borg. We are the Borg. Resistance is futile. Is Star Trek Online. And... Yes, the game is, it's been out for quite some time. Most Uh, of the games we've mentioned tonight have been out for quite some time. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, some of yours are older than mine, but... (laughs) That's because we are older than you. (laughs) Well, I did play a lot of old games. I just, they, I don't have a chance to replay them much. I mean, unless you're talking emulators, you know, in in that case, then I have, like... Infinite. Yeah, I have a ton that I've played. Um... (laughs) Because that's how I used to play console games back in you know 2000. Because I didn't have one, uh, so I I did emulators on everything. But um, going back to Star Trek Online, it came out in 2010 as as like a subscription based game, kind of like World of Warcraft and the like at the time. And uh, they the premise of the game, like I remember playing, they had like a like a trial version uh, that you could play the first level. What's sad about it is I could never figure out the stupid game enough to get past the first level. Uh, so I just was like, eh, I'm, I'm not going to subscribe to this. Uh, and then I think it was like two years later, maybe three years later, they went free to play mm-hmm. and made it so that things were like transactionary. And I started trying to play it again and I still couldn't get past whatever it was. So I quit playing it again, and then I I think I started back up in 2016. Yep, that's about right. Uh, 2016, and I've been playing it ever since. But I back in that that time, you know, they had expansions and they had um, renovated the game, and I I could never, like I said, get past that level with that character I created. And for some reason, that version of the game still was active, even though they no longer supported any of it. Mm. So that character was forever locked in that realm. And I deleted the character, created a new one, started the game over uh, because it's not like I was that far in. And (laughs) everything was different. Like instead of level was like you fighting the Borg. And then, you know, the the new one was you're fighting the Klingon Empire. And so it was just totally different storyline that they were going for. And. Totally renovated everything. Uh, the only benefit is is now they have a ton of the uh, actors, like uh, the ones that are still among us and those that are passed on, um, that have played roles in Star Trek Online. And uh, so you get to hear those. They have it's it's a pretty expansive universe, uh, and they're constantly improving it. I I for the life of me don't know how it's still going, but um, <laughs> I'm thankful that it is because I've dumped money into it. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I play it whenever there's a new expansion, they come out with a couple every year. And then there used to be a way that I could, uh, game the system. Cause they have four different ways that you can populate your, your game with money. There's four different like currencies in the game, which is confusing as I'll get up. <laughs> um, like they have Zen, which you pay cash for, or you can trade in dilithium, which r- requires you to grind to make it. Um, and then they have, um, there's like a, a digital currency. Then they have like latinum. And, and so there's like all four and it, it yeah, it gets, I, I figured out that if you traded in the dilithium, got the Zen, which is the money, cause you can't trade it in for real money. I would buy the keys for the lock boxes with that. Uh, cause I used, I figured out a way to get dilithium really easy. And then I would flip them on. They have like an internal game market. Mm-hmm. And I figured out how to flip those uh, and make a uh, pretty good chunk of change with the digital currency that's in like in the character part of the game. And I was able to flip them and then buy them real cheap and then flip them and buy them real cheap and flip them and buy them real cheap. And I did it enough times over a course of a month that uh, I was buying up all my competition that was even remotely close to me. <laughs> and then driving the price way up and selling it for super high. And now like they've like nerfed that system. So it's all high. Like there's nothing, (laughs) there's no way to get around it now. 
So I was like, well, I made the money while it was making and I was able to buy like one of the expensive lock boxes I didn't want to pay for that ended up on the market. So, but it didn't cost me anything but time. <laughs> I'm remembering this now between 2016 and 2018, like half the time before we would start recording. Yeah, I'm just mining this Star Trek stuff so I can trade it in for this or I can do this or I can. Well, I bought the Kelvin Universe <laughs> yeah. Enterprise. I remember that. Because yeah. I was like, I need an Enterprise that's like T6, which is like their top level starship. And I was like, I, I can't get one of, of this, you know. Then I ended up getting Captain Pike's Enterprise, and that one's actually better. But <laughs> Absolutely. Anyways, yeah, I still play the game, so. Very cool, very cool. My top spot is... <laughs> Need for Speed Most Wanted, the 2005 version. The UC thought you were the one. Hey, where's your fancy ride? I'm glad you're here, Sugar Plum. You brought me luck last time. How's your car running? <laughs> Faster than anything here. Hey, where's your punk money now? What happened is he's all so and no go. You're mine now. That ride's hot. <laughs> oh, man. Did you pick the wrong street to run on? I want every single unit after the guy. Everyone? Everyone! What about the blacklist? So this is the version where they had all these major talent voice people come in. They had Josie Marin come in. They had all these other people come in to do voices. The reason why I love this game so much is because it was basically the blacklist before the TV show. So in this game, for those that may not know, for those that know, I'm sorry, but for those that don't know and never heard of this one, uh, you had 15 members on the blacklist, and you as the player had to get to the number one spot. And I just loved playing this, and the other reason why I loved it was because all of the environments are New England, Massachusetts environments. I'm like, this is so cool! So awesome. I love playing that game, and it is a game I can go back to at any point in time. And even though I kind of grumble at it at first, because you have to, because obviously in all the Need for Speed games, you have to start out with the weakest car ever. But uh, no, I love that game, and, and all, of, all of the games that are on all of our lists, I mean, we all love replaying them, hence why we made this 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 podcast, this episode, and I'm sure there are plenty of other, like, I, I almost put Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage on here, because that's another one I can play through all the time. Um, I'm sure there are so many others that we could talk about. Anybody got any honorable mentions they want to bring up? Tetris. <laughs> of course, how could we do this without mentioning Tetris? Because Tetris is just the game that is, I, I think it's the it's the game that united the gaming universe, like, once Tetris came out, even your mom would play video games. Like, I I, I told this story a few uh, several months ago about how like I couldn't even get my Game Boy at times because my mom was playing Tetris. It was, <laughs> it was stupidly ridiculous. And then I guess Mario Kart 64. It's another party oh, game yeah. in which you punch your friends. Yep, that was always fun. Yeah, I I, I enjoy that game as well. Um, uh, I I totally blanked, but Super Smash Brothers. Um, oh yeah that that franchise i i had uh super smash brothers super smash brothers uh melee and super smash brothers brawl and brawl was probably my favorite because um you could get zero suit samus and then you could also get sonic the hedgehog Mm -hmm. and i would destroy people in that um (laughs) to the point i i went to a convention once and they they had i i stumbled upon the gaming area uh, which was like in the basement of the hotel, of course, uh, because it was loud. And they had all the gamers down there, and they were playing uh, Super Smash Brothers. Uh, it wasn't Brawl; it was, uh, or it was the one after that came out for the Wii U. I want to say. Um, and they Wasn't had that the, just Super Smash Brothers. No, Super Smash Brothers is on the 64. They had no, no, no. I know, but I'm saying, like, wasn't the new version just Super Smash Brothers for the? No, it wasn't. They had a they had some name for it, but anyways, um, 
they were they were doing tournaments in the basement and i was just like oh super smash brothers so i stood back and i watched for about 15 20 minutes waiting for people to cycle through and then i watched the one guy and i was like okay he thinks he's a hard <laughs> <laughs> you know he's he's the best one and so i was like I, i'm curious if i'm still good or if i'm rusty and so i got in there and it was like a four player match and um yeah i i i wore him down and use the other two people to my advantage, which was very helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, he did take me down, but I came very close. And then the next game, I did, I, I knocked him right out. Um, and and then he was like, okay. And then he got up and left. Um, <laughs> but I I was like, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll play one more. And then I, I was like, I'm done. I got to go do some other stuff. There were panels I was waiting for, and I killed enough time. But yeah, I was I was so excited to to play that. Yeah, I remember the original one on sixty four. Oh man, that was first released January twenty first of ninety nine. Uh, latest release Super Smash Brothers Ultimate December seventh, twenty eighteen. Oh man, I, yeah, I remember that because what I always used to love to do is I always used to love to kick Kirby off the thing. I hated Kirby in that game. I don't yeah, because he was a vacuum cleaner, and yep. he would go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Two other ones I want to mention, and if Neil, if you have any other ones you want to mention, we can get out of the get the heck out of here. After that is uh, Bloody Roar Two and Souls Edge. Bloody Roar Two is the animalist. It's the the animal character you know people that turn into animal characters and fight each other and then soul's edge was part of it's part of the soul caliber franchise but specifically soul's edge because it was in like literally it was one of the only reasons why i enjoyed going to the movies at times of actually being at the movie theater not in, in watching a film was because they had a soul's edge thing uh there and i used to love playing that um a uh, friend of the show, as we all know, Mike Mike the Birdman from This Week in Geek. Uh, I know he has had several cabinets in his house. The one cabinet I would, uh, if I ever had a place where I could ever have any room for it, the only cabinet I want is that Star Wars trilogy cabinet. You guys know what I'm talking about? I think so. It's the one where you sit in the chair and the speakers are built into the chair and there's this giant thing, and it's a separate thing, and you go through each of the movies. Uh, I, I think it's just called Star Wars Trilogy. Anyway, love that. Anything else you want to mention, Neil? I'm going to go one more for the Sega Saturn, because I'm a huge Sega Saturn advocate, and that would be uh, Fighters Mega Mix. This is a game that combined uh, Virtua Fighter with Fighting Vipers, which was like a sister game at the time. They haven't made a Fighting Vipers in years. But uh, it's all the Fighting Vipers characters versus... Uh, Virtua Fighter. Fighting Vipers characters have uh, armor that they wear, and you can knock it off. And they had, they had to kind of rebalance the game so that like the Virtua Fighter characters would have would be at an advantage or disadvantage depending on like how much of the armor they knocked off of the Fighting Vipers characters. And it had a bunch of like uh, bonus characters in there too. You could play as the the chick from Virtua Cop Two and uh, the car from Daytona USA. There's a couple Sonic characters in there for some stupid reason, and uh, it's just. It's not a very deep game. It's just stupid fun, and uh, I remember liking it a lot. Very cool. Very I, cool. I I also like uh, one of the other series that I played a crap load of was the Battlefield series. Mm hmm. Um, I I also just got invited <laughs> to play um, the game soon, but uh, I'm not the new able. one twenty one forty two. Yeah. 42. yeah. I, I, I'm, or the 2042, yeah, I had the number wrong, but either way, I, I, I really like the franchise, despite the fact that you're just blowing stuff up. I'm not particularly good, Mm. (laughs) so I kind of rest on the fact that I like to blow things up, which is buildings, and I use a, uh, vehicle rocket launcher specifically for, um, Sniping. <laughs> That's what I loved about Battlefield 2142 is you can get in this giant robot mech suit 
and just go destroy everything. You can step step in a car and boom. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Because the world needs another movie podcast. The Geek Cast Radio Network presents for your listening pleasure, The Cinema Geek. Hosted by Amanda, Kevin, Matt, and Dan. Each week we dive headfirst in the landscape of movies as we discuss movie news, play movie games, go in-depth on reviews, and even have a top ten countdown or two. Also, don't miss our director retrospective series where we review noted director's movies film by film. Bottom line is, if you love movies and love podcasts, you need to experience Experience the Cinema Geeks. You can find us on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, or GeekCastRadio.com. Discover a world of vintage and modern toys that's more than meets the eye with the Triple Takeover Toy Cast. Hosted by toy writers and photographers Toy Box Soapbox, 6 and TF Square One, this informal and chilled out series of discussions cover everything from vintage Transformers to Mask, Diaclone, Microman and more, be it nostalgic or current. Whether you're a seasoned collector or a casual robot enthusiast, all are welcome. Triple Takeover Toy Cast. Hey, it's Wes from Poppin' Off Toys. Wanted to let you know about PoppinOffToys.com. We can be your number one source for Funko collectible figures to add to your ever-growing collection. If you're in Nashville, Tennessee, we actually have a retail store that you can come by, 5916 Charlotte Pike. And for the rest of us, PoppinOffToys.com is always open, and you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. And the name is just simply popping off toys thank you so much and always keep it popping hurry skeletal hurry i am hurrying i'm hurrying the powers of grayskull series has covered every episode of all of the masters of the universe cartoons except for two join optimus solo and tfg and mike as they tell tales of eternia discover the myths of etheria become masters in space evolve into the Masters of Grayskull, and finally reveal the revelation of Masters of the Universe. We'll also be finding out the origins of how guests got into or out of watching the Masters of the Universe cartoons, and so much more. You can find the podcast at geekcastradio.com and any podcatching client you choose to use. By the power and for the honor of Grayskull, we all have the power. Amen! Since 2009, we have been the premier cartoon podcast here at the GeekCast Radio Network. We are TuneCast. From taking you beyond the cartoons we grew up with to seasonal saucy tune talk, and now we get the origins of Toonsters everywhere as we ask guests... 30 questions about their cartoon watching experiences, plus so much more. Tooncast is back. Join me, TF2 and Mike, and the rest of the GCR and crew as we give you all the toon talk you will ever need, only on the GCRN. And wherever you consume your podcasts, we are beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. We are all tunes all the time here on Tooncast. Yeah. Not bad at all. All right. What do you got going on, Mr. Neil? Well, at the moment, I'm uh, putting out some new podcasts. I just put out the uh, the new Gaming Hipster, which is all about uh, – we, well, we did a couple book reports. <laughs> we, we did the Doom novel, and I also finally gave my official review of uh, Smoke and Mirrors, which was about the Mike Kennedy fiasco you know the the retro VGS and the Coleco Chameleon and all that crap and oh no it was it's it was interesting to do a book review of it just because I had I had basically watched everything happen in real time so mm-hmm. as I'm reading the book I'm like yep I remember that remember that <laughs> so there really wasn't much to say except like yeah they got all they got everything right and it's exactly how I remember it and uh, we talked a little bit about the Intellivision Amico which is this weird new retro console that's coming out it's like. It's like the power of like a of like a of like a tablet or something, but it's like supposed to compete with new consoles and it's priced very awkwardly. So uh, that that should give you a little uh, teaser as to what we thought about it. And then I'm also on Twitch, uh, Twitch TV slash TV's Mr. Neil. Um, also Patreon at uh, Patreon.com slash Mr. Neil. And I have a YouTube channel, but the uh, URL is kind of complicated, so you can basically get the URL at either of the two URLs I just gave you. So there's that. There you go. 
What do you got going on, Steve? Uh, Alter Geek, of course, and uh, all things Transformers, as well as uh, the Top 100, which is coming up, and uh, more customizing Transformer figures. There you go. Thank you for joining us here inside the studio. If you'd like to get in contact with us or leave feedback for the show, there are several ways to do so. Visit the website, geekcastradio.com, where you can listen to and comment on all of our podcasts and other posts as well. Send an email to feedback at geekcastradio.com. Here are all the ways you can listen to us nowadays. Apple and Google Podcasts, leave us reviews, please. Spotify and any other podcatching client you choose to use. Follow us on Twitter at Geekcast Radio is the show is the network at its ITS Studio 2009 is the show. I'm at TFG on Mike. Steve, what is your Twitter? CP21. And Neil? At TV's Mr. Neil. Become a fan on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Geekcast Radio Network. You can also search out Studio 2009 podcast over there as well as the gaming hipster. Join us next time when Steve and I will be getting the podcast approach of TV's Mr. Neil. Yay! What? Yay! <laughs> For now, I'm TF2 and Mike with... Steve Megatron. And TV's Mr. Neil. You'll hear us back in the studio soon. Nice work. We'll just stay on this course. All right, I gotta stop this thing. How do you stop this thing? Jane, stop this crazy thing!